first of all, that lack of respect for police officers and lack of respect for authority motivates people to engage in violent crimes. But the second part of that is also that I believe that police officers feel more handcuffed. And I don't mean that as a pun, but I really do think that they feel like they got their hands tied. And if they do anything to a criminal or actually do their job and arrest criminals or punish criminals for what they've been, uh, what they've been doing and process them according to the law, of course, they're under fire for doing that, just for doing their jobs. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. So Chief Cunningham in the same article actually mentioned the crime and talked about it. And even though it's not technically connected to uh, Chief Finley resigning, I do think that Sheriff Cunningham has some good insights that are worth noting. So we'll go ahead and look at those as well, again, from WSFA News. Right now in our state, we are looking at gun violence going up, but at the same time, we're trying to get more or trying to put more guns on the street. Now, personally, I'm not aware of anybody trying to put more guns on the street. Maybe what Sheriff Cunningham is referring to is that there has been a substantial increase in the past year in gun ownership because a lot of people were buying guns. They were nervous about Joe Biden being put into office and especially the way that the people around him were talking about. They got scared of that and were wondering if that was going to result in them not being able to buy guns or certain guns. And because of that, they bought up a whole bunch of them and the pandemic and a lot of other factors too. That could be what he's referencing, but I don't want to put words in Sheriff Cunningham's mouth. So for now, we'll move on. Continuing. Not only do we need to think about that, we can't just be thinking about programs. We got to start thinking about consequences and those consequences are tough sometimes. If you commit a gun-related crime, I think we need to make sure that you can get the highest bond and that your conviction, we follow it through. We want to make sure that you get the stiffest penalty that they can get and the conviction needs to be the same. Right now, we are seeing people get in and out of jail on bonds that are just, I mean, it makes you cry. To know that somebody that just took a life and they are going to jail and they are getting the same bond as a person would get for shoplifting, in some cases, Cunningham went on to say. Now, I don't know what he meant by the first part of that about putting wanting to put more guns on the street, like I said, but that last part, I couldn't agree with more. The fact that he is saying we, we got to quit thinking about government programs and think about actually punishing criminals that break the law. Because right now, we are not giving punishments that are proportional to the crime. Now, it's wrong to steal, but it's not the same as taking somebody's life. And what Sheriff Cunningham is talking about is he's seeing people that are taken to jail and convicted and given bonds equal to a person that is guilty of shoplifting for killing a person. That's a problem, guys, because the purpose of incarceration, despite what people will tell you, it's not about rehabilitation. It's not about punishing people and throwing them away forever. It's about protecting the innocent. That is the purpose of incarceration. Always has been, always will be. If we can rehabilitate them, good. I'm in favor of that, but that's not the goal. The goal is to keep people that would hurt the innocent off of the streets and make them incapable of hurting innocent people again. And that's exactly what Chief Cunningham, or sorry, Sheriff Cunningham is discussing here. He's saying that the problem with what we're having and the reason that we're seeing an increase in violent crime, I'm sure it's not the only thing, but part of it is we're not actually punishing people proportionally to what they're doing. And, and that could be for a number of different reasons. One of them is because we're trying to do bond reform and, and we're trying to downscale and downplay the amount of bond. And he's saying, we need to be making sure those people don't get back on the streets. We need to set bond high and give them the highest possible bond. And if they're guilty, incarcerate them. We need to actually punish criminals. And Sheriff Finley, or sorry, I keep mixing up the name. Sheriff Cunningham is a hundred percent right on that. And furthermore, there has been an anti-police sentiment lately that has, I think, been a fairly compelling contributing factor to the rise in crime rate. And I do have statistics 
to back this up. Let's go ahead and take a look at this really quickly. First of all, you have this from Statista. And this is the violent crime rate per 100,000. So this is adjusted for population. And you see there, this chart starts all the way back in 90s and the crime rate really kind of hit its zenith in America in 1992. And ever since it's been on a downward trend, some years, you know, you'll see a little pop up, but ultimately you see a downward trend in all of these years. Now, what I want you to note is interesting is the first time we had a two-year consecutive upward swing that I can that I can see is in 2015. So from 2015 to 2016 and 2017, it went up, started going down a little bit from 2017 to 2018, and then on to 2019, which remained, it went down a little, but it was pretty much static. Why the upswing, especially considering we've been on a downward trend since the early 90s, why the upswing in 2015? What happened in 2015? Ferguson, Missouri. And by the way, if you're saying, well, yeah, that happened back in 2015, but we saw a similar thing happen with George Floyd where everybody started mobilizing and there was all this anti-police sentiment and we didn't see that upswing in 2020, right? Yeah, actually, no. If you look at this article from Time Magazine, this year, many Americans have experienced significantly higher levels of violence, both wrought on and within their communities. Gun violence and gun crime has in particular risen drastically with over 19,000 people killed in shootings and firearm-related incidents in 2020. By the way, that is excluding suicides. That's talking specifically about homicides. That's the highest death toll in over 20 years, according to data from the Gun Violence Archive. And so you can see that just based surely on the statistics, that in the years where we have these massive events where there's a, a giant groundswell of anti-police sentiment, in one case, you had the, the case in 2015 with Michael Flynn, where the police were 100% justified and did exactly what they were supposed to do because the guy reached for the police officer's gun. George Floyd, very clear that in that case, very different than the Michael Brown thing. George Floyd, where the police officer, I mean, it, it was perfectly reasonable to say that the police officer did not handle that correctly in any shape or form even though I don't think that it was quite as bad as some people on the left tried to make it, but they always try to make everything worse than it actually is. But when it comes to George Floyd, uh, that was another thing that caused it. And so in both of those years, from 2014 to 2015, seeing a really big increase in violent crime, and then the same thing happens when it started trending downward in 2017, spikes right back up higher than it's been in 20 years in 2020. I do not think these things are coincidences. When you start telling people that the police are hunting them and oppressing them and that that kind of level of, that has two effects. First of all, that lack of respect for police officers and lack of respect for authority motivates people to engage in violent crimes. But the second part of that is also that I believe that police officers feel more handcuffed. And I don't mean that as a pun, but I really do think that they feel like they got their hands tied. And if they do anything to a criminal or actually do their job and arrest criminals or punish criminals for what they've been what they've been doing and process them according to the law, of course, they're under fire for doing that, just for doing their jobs. And you probably also have quite a bit of good police officers leave, especially leadership, older police officers that have a lot of experience with this, that are of the age they could retire, that might have been hanging on for various reasons. They get to that point, they're seeing all this anti-police sentiment go up, and they're like, maybe I should just retire. This isn't worth it anymore. Or people that are really good at this pulling out of that profession. Or in 2020, amazingly enough, you defund police in a lot of the major cities in the country. Turns out, you get worse policing. So th there's a number of factors that go to it, but it all goes back to, and you can see how the data actually follows this trend, that when you drum up all this anti-police sentiment and you start talking about people, you're not really criminals, you're just victims of your circumstances, then people act upon that. And we're seeing violent crimes, and unfortunately, innocent people are getting hurt 
because people are using this to push their political ideology. And some people will look at these and look at these statistics and go, well, see, the reason that we saw this massive uptick in gun crime in 2020 was because of gun sales. Unfortunately for them, that's a load of crap. If you don't believe me, look at this statistic. This is the number of NICS background checks, which means people that go to a federal firearms dealer and purchase guns. As you can see, we've been on an upward trend of gun ownership and guns being bought by year for a very, very long time. Barack Obama was a big part of the reason that we saw an increase of gun sales. The election of Joe Biden should surprise nobody that when people thought that that might happen, there was an increase of gun sales there. The problem is it's been on an upward trajectory for a really long time, and yet we were on a downward trajectory for crime up until last year. The, the one time we've actually seen correlation between these two statistics was in 2019 and 2020, which means that there is no correlation between the two overall. If you're looking at multiple years, you're saying, oh, we've been having a drastic increase in gun ownership for a really, really long time now. It's just this one past year, they happened to correlate. Well, what about the other 20 years where they didn't correlate, where we had an uptick in gun ownership, but not an uptick in gun crime or gun homicides? Well, that would lead you to believe that gun ownership is not the cause of that. In fact, you could actually argue the opposite, that the more guns we have out there by law-abiding citizens, the less likely you want to have criminals attacking people because they're afraid they might get shot. I don't think there's really any data to back that up, but I'm just saying that you could make that argument way easier than you could the argument that the rise in gun ownership and guns out there in circulation are the reason that we're seeing an increase in gun crime. The data actually says the exact opposite for every year in the past 20 years, except for 2020. That's the one exception, which would lead us to believe that there is no real correlation. So another problem with that theory is where the guns are being sold. Because the massive uptick in gun homicides has happened mostly, not entirely, but mostly in cities. Cities tend to have a lower rate of people owning firearms, and it's harder to get them within the cities. They have stricter regulations. A lot of the cities where that gun crime has been increasing the most are cities like Chicago, Illinois, where it's hardest to get a firearm. And so not only do they have the problem of, well, it didn't work that way for the past 20 years, they also have the problem of having to explain why is it the cities where it's the hardest to get a gun is the place where we're seeing the most gun, the most increase in gun crime. It's not about the gun. It's about the people and how they're reacting to this anti-police sentiment. And another thing, and this is what Sheriff Cunningham was talking about, the lack of prison space is part of it. It's leaving our citizens vulnerable because when we do convict these people, we have nowhere to put them. And so we give them smaller sentences so they take up less space for less time. We're not doing our job of keeping these people in prison when they commit violent crimes and take somebody's life to protect society from them. And when criminals get out, they normally commit more crimes. Not all the time. We do have some that are reformed and stop that. But usually, especially with violent criminals, when they get let out again, they commit more crimes and more violence. And that's part of the reason that the prison space issue was such a big deal in the state of Alabama. By the way, little news on that. Speaker McCutcheon actually did meet with Governor Ivey to talk specifically about the issue of prisons and how to increase our prison space, because in, in Alabama, we've got them stacked in there like corkwood, and they're, they're running out of space very quickly. McCutcheon did say that that was a productive meeting. Take that for what you will. Just because he said it doesn't mean it's the truth, but at least Speaker McCutcheon feels as though they're making progress on that, so let's hope that our elected officials can do what that. That's actually one of the few legitimate functions of government. And so hopefully they are able to do that. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?